The Sith apprentice Darth Maul was trained from a young age to do just one thing. Formerly Darth, now just Maul. Strap in as we dissect every kill this child of the dark side makes in canon. Because that's what we do here at Star Wars Sublight. The one place where overanalyzing the galaxy is our speciality. This is my apprentice, Darth Maul. This time let's keep it super simple, if it would have qualified for an imperial chain code as a citizen of the galaxy and we see them die, it's on this list. This time round I'm including kills that happen on the page as well. That's right we're gonna dissect every comic that Maul has appeared in, so you're gonna want to stick around to the end to make sure you get the full rundown. Let's kick off this kill list with the untimely death of one Jedi Master, Qui-Gon Jinn. <laughs> Qui-Gon was the first in a new line of Jedi who'd meet their end at the hands of their ancient enemy, the Sith. Darth Maul's victory over the Jedi was short-lived however when a young upstart named Obi-Wan Kenobi cut Maul in two. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Fast forward more than 10 years to the time of the Clone Wars and we find Maul still alive if not fully intact. I am surprised you could have forgotten me so easily. Turns out he's been hanging out with the rest of the forgotten trash on the trash world of Lotho Minor. Maul's brother, Savage, is the one who finds him and gets him the help he needs to get back on his... <clears throat> feet? From that point on, the pair set out to paint the galaxy red in a new campaign of terror and fear with their first stop on the colony world of Raidonia. The Clone Wars Season 4's final episode is titled Revenge and starts with a lesson for Maul's brother, who is now his Sith apprentice. Slaughter of the innocent, mercilessly and without compromise. Typically I wouldn't count an off-screen kill, but it would seem the creators have done everything they can to make no bones about it. These kids got chopped. <laughs> And they're not the only ones on Raidonia to face Maul's wrath. Five more hostages are filmed as part of an execution video designed to get the attention of the Jedi Order and in particular his old enemy, Obi-Wan. I have to go. Season 5 of The Clone Wars and Maul is back at it with the premiere episode titled Revival. This is Finn Erte, a Jedi Knight who fought in The Clone Wars. She dies protecting a fellow Jedi Knight from the rampaging brothers who claim to be the true Sith Lords of the galaxy. Always two there are, my brother. The Master and his apprentice travel to Florum to meet with pirate captains loyal to Hondo Onaka. When bribery fails, he offers three pirate captains a choice, either join them or die. Two captains readily agree to join him, but one, a weak way named Sabo, is reluctant. Maul makes an example of Sabo by executing him while facetiming with the weak way's boss. Maul and his new merry band of pirates storm Hondo's stronghold on Florum, looking to wipe out Hondo and what's left of his forces. But you never can trust a pirate. Never trust a pirate. And Hondo is able to sway the hearts of his former crew, calling for the second mutiny of the day. Betrayed, Maul fights his way back to the hauler he rode in on, losing a leg but managing to take down a few of the pirates who dared to give chase. <laughs> After suffering a humiliating defeat at the hands of Hondo and his crew, the brothers were found adrift and a little worse for wear by none other than the Death Watch, an interplanetary terror organization with ties to Mandalore. In a season 5 episode titled Eminence, Maul teams up with Death Watch's leader, the treacherous Previsla, with a plan to bring the many crime syndicates of the galaxy under their combined rule. They are strong, and unlike pirates, they possess honor. Another weakness. Maul travels to the Hutt homeworld of Nalhata to dispatch of the Hutt cartel's leaders. The Hutt's are gangsters. Together with Savage and the Death Watch Mandos, they fight their way to the Hutt fortress's inner chamber, and we get to see Maul slice open an unfortunate Twi'lek Enforcer. <laughs> The Hutt Council are left in pieces, both figuratively and literally, but there are still a couple of Huts holding out across the galaxy. So the only thing that you can tell me is that I will find Jabba at Jabba's palace. Kill him. When he gets to Jabba's palace on Tatooine, Maul also dices up a Gamorrean guard. Their mighty Jabba and the Hutt families have decided to join you. 
The alliance between Darth Maul's growing Shadow Collective and the Death Watch was short-lived, however, as both Maul and Vizsla planned to betray each other. Then we execute Maul and those thugs. Vizsla will betray us. We have no other choice. Things were tense, and with the Mandalorian throne finally in sight, their conflict came to the surface in the season 5 episode titled Shades of Reason. Prey Vizsla moves against Maul first, throwing him in the cells of the Mandalorian city of Sindari. When Maul inevitably escapes, he heads straight to the throne room to challenge his former business associate to mortal combat. I challenge you, one warrior to another. So be it. <laughs> Vizsla puts up a fight, but eventually he would fall victim to his former ally and lost his head for the betrayal. Like you said, only the strongest shall rule. Now there are two of them. Destabilizing Mandalore like this plunged the planet into civil war and brought both the Mandalorians and the Sith into conflict with their mutual ancient enemy, the Jedi. Obi-Wan discovered what had taken place on Mandalore in the following episode titled The Lawless, and was compelled to join the fight against Death Watch to free the rightful ruler of Mandalore and his sort of girlfriend, Duchess Satine Kreese. Obi-Wan. Okay, she's not technically Obi-Wan's girlfriend, but the two were in love at one point or another. Upon realizing this, Maul comes up with the ultimate plan for revenge. He brings Obi-Wan to the throne room to watch Satine suffer before running her through with the Darksaber. The perfect tool for my vengeance is in front of us. Later that night, Maul is attacked and defeated by his former master Sidious, who also kills his brother Savage. Have mercy. There is no mercy. Maul is thrown into prison where he'll rot for the rest of his days. Nah, I'm just kidding, this is Star Wars. Breaking out of prison is easier than jumping to hyperspace. Well, it seems old habits die hard because with his newfound freedom, Maul once again travels to Mandalore to reclaim the throne, bait the Jedi into sending Kenobi to him and trying to kill or torture him further. The only plan that matters. Except things don't exactly go to plan in Season 7 of The Clone Wars when Ahsoka Tano shows up with a battalion of Republic clone troopers and the Mandalorians loyal to Bo-Katan Kryze. No outsider will ever rule Mandalore. Bo-Katan is the sister of the deceased Duchess Satine. She's a former member of Death Watch and the right hand to Prey Vizsla. You're Satine's sister, aren't you? She split with part of the clan following Vizsla's execution at the hands of Maul. Maul is eventually captured by Republic forces and in the episode Shattered, he's once again imprisoned. This time, the circumstances surrounding his escape from prison are entirely different. That's because Ahsoka now finds herself public enemy number one on a Republic Venator full of Order 66 clones drifting through hyperspace. Remembering his offer of an alliance during the Siege of Mandalore, Ahsoka releases Maul. Don't make me regret this. Except she's not looking for an ally, but instead for a weapon to be turned loose against the Republic forces. Without his usual red blades or the Darksaber to aid him, Maul resorts to the dark side alone to accomplish his rampage below deck on the Venator Tribunal. Maul arrived at the engine room in the final episode of The Clone Wars titled Victory and Death, and gets to work on collapsing the hyperdrive, taking down soldiers and engineers in the process. Technically, Maul is responsible for the death of the 332nd Battalion stationed on the Tribunal, but it's tricky to accurately quantify just how many clones were on board. Besides, we don't really see them kick the bucket on screen. With its crash inevitable, Maul makes his escape before the Tribunal impacts on the surface of the moon. Once again, Maul is a free agent of chaos when the Clone Wars come to an end. But things take a turn sometime after, and as we enter the era of Star Wars Rebels, he finds himself hunted by a new sect of force-wielding assassins known as the Imperial Inquisitors. The Shadow. 
During the season 2 finale of Star Wars Rebels, Maul reveals himself to a young Jedi apprentice named Ezra Bridger. I don't know you. Call me Old Master. And through his journey, he's reunited with his former frenemy, Ahsoka. Maul. What fun. The gang of Force users work together to find a way off the Sith world of Malachor, but first they have to deal with the three Inquisitors who have followed them planetside. Maul has been attempting to sway the mind of young Ezra to the dark side of the Force, but the two are confronted by the wicked seventh sister. <laughs> Maul immobilizes her with the Force and asks Ezra to do the honors. The dark act was a test, one that would seal the bond between Ezra and Maul as new master and apprentice. Clearly enraged at Ezra's hesitation, Maul takes matters into his own hands. <laughs> Malachor wasn't the last time Ezra and Maul would see each other. In the third season's episode titled Holocrons of Fate, Maul learns the whereabouts of his ultimate enemy, Kenobi. the old Jedi Master and one who ruined his life decades before. Darth Maul draws young Ezra to Tatooine as bait to force Obi-Wan out of hiding. But before Obi-Wan can be located, Ezra is attacked by a tribe of Tusken Raiders. This is a trap! In protecting Ezra from harm, Maul kills his final three victims. That's because when he finally reaches his sworn enemy, he challenges Kenobi to a duel and is finally cut down. Maul dies the same way as all the others he's used to torture Obi-Wan, struck down by a lightsaber and cradled in Kenobi's arms. Ironic. So that's every kill of Darth Maul from the Phantom Menace through to his final mission on Tatooine. But what about when the cameras aren't rolling? Why? What? Let's check out every kill the Sith Apprentice has made between the pages of the canon comics too. This is where the fun begins. If you're enjoying this video so far, why not give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. What fun! You'd be amazed at the things you miss while traveling at light speed, so I'd like to invite you to come on out of hyperspace and explore the finer details of their galaxy far, far away with me. Join me. And together we'll overanalyze the galaxy together. Maul has featured heavily in three canon publications, in which he's been been on several missions, breakouts, and hunting trips, all of which have led to Maul boosting his body count considerably, including the Jedi Padawan Eldracatus. That's right, when I said previously that Qui-Gon was the first in a new line of Jedi to be killed by the Sith, I lied. I lied. Liar! Well, it was true from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? Because that was the canon for about 18 years, until the 2017 Darth Maul comic flipped the lore and showed us that Maul was secretly a naughty boy while apprentice to Darth Sidious. Before the events of the Phantom Menace, the Sith had been sticking to the shadows for a thousand years. Darth Maul was raised to be the ultimate weapon against the Jedi, and as he grew stronger in the dark side of the Force, he also grew impatient. While looking for an outlet, a force sensitive to test his might, Maul hit the jackpot when he learned of the captive Jedi named Eldracatus, who was up for auction by a gangster named Zevs Rexus. Maul never even placed a bid, but instead killed those who won as they transferred the Padawan from her cell. None of these slavers made it out alive, and one was even suffocated when Maul used the force to smother him with his robe. Making their escape, Maul was shot down by Zrexus, who offered top dollar to anyone who killed the force-wielding pair. Maul and Cadus actually made a pretty good team for a brief moment, fighting back to back and repelling waves of hunters looking to claim the reward on their heads. And once they had stemmed the tide of bounty hunters, the pair engaged in a duel to the death, with Maul eventually impaling the Padawan. 
Before leaving the sector, Maul paid a visit to Zrexus, who had figured out the secret to Maul's power. Daring her to say it, she spoke the word Sith and was cut down by the apprentice, who was desperate to keep his name, and more importantly his master's dealings, to the shadows. Next up is an Age of Republic issue all about Darth Maul, which shows us that even after killing the Jedi Padawan Eldra Cadus, Maul is still not satisfied. In fact, he uses Eldra's name as an alias for a fake employer and poses as a thief looking to hire a crew. Locking in on a potentially force-sensitive thief on Coruscant, Maul hires Zek Pyros, and after putting the scoundrel through his paces, Maul strikes. Knowing that a lightsaber wound on the lower levels of Coruscant would draw too much unwanted attention from the Jedi, Maul instead uses the force to launch a shard of scrap metal into Pyros's chest. This poor soul is Dirty Calgrees, a Quarren who actually got the upper hand on Maul during a bar fight by blinding him with ink. That's before Maul used the force to guide a dagger into his chest. Remember when Sidious dethroned Darth Maul and killed his brother Savage on Mandalore? He threw Maul in prison, and the story of his escape is told in the comic series titled Son of Dathomir. The series is actually pretty light on kills by Maul, but one of them involved the Jedi boarding Maul's ship as he was trying to ransom two leaders of the Separatist army to his former master, Lord Sidious. But his plan was interrupted by none other than General Kenobi and his Jedi friends. Maul releases Dooku to help fight off the invading Republic forces, before igniting his darksaber and taking out a clone trooper. But aside from the bar fights, the prison break, and the secret missions to wipe out Force users without his master knowing. The comics also detail how Maul was sent by Sidious to handle matters for the Trade Federation before the events of the Phantom Menace. You have been well trained, my young apprentice. They will be no match for you. These pirates were in the wrong place at the wrong time in the first issue of 2017's Darth Maul comic. The pirate faction was opposing the Trade Federation who were trying to establish a secret mining colony on Calyx. They were quickly destroyed by Maul aboard his Sith infiltrator ship, the Marauder. This poor guy was sucked into the vacuum of space where he smashed against the window of the Lucre Hulk cruiser which housed the hostage Nemoidian Trade Federation leadership. This friendly fire, as it turned out, was on purpose because everyone was up for elimination. It turned out Maul and his master valued secrecy of the Sith above all. Lord Sidious promised us peace. That's it, that's the list. Do you think there's anyone I've missed? Let me know in the comments below who you think could have been included. We want the holocron to be as accurate as possible. Thanks to you for watching to the end. If you want to see kill counts for other characters like Ahsoka, check out the videos on the end screen now. Like and subscribe and remember the force will be with you, always.